Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Five Get Grand Online by Enid Blyton, although this is actually by Bruno Vincent. Dane reads. Uh, he's kind of a humorous writer who does his own takes on like a lot of the classical writers, so uh, I recently read by him as well A Christmas Carol 2 Contagion by Charles Dickens. That one wasn't particularly good. I did enjoy this a lot more. Um, basically we've got the famous five except they're older and they're dealing with like problems that are more relatable to, to our adults today I guess. So I'll read you the blur. I'm going to go through and check out my tabs. I think I've only got what? Three, four, five, eight or nine of them. And then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So. Tell me, Gran, George said. What operating system does your computer run on? Electricity, Gran said. Join Anne, George, Dick, Julian and Timmy the dog as they try to solve their grandmother's computer woes. But can they help? Or will they all find themselves caught in a web of confusion, frustration and failure? Here we go, chapter one, the opening line of uh, chapters called Five Get Cyber Security Conscious. And this is just great because um, this is still appropriate now, you know? It had been a long, harrowing year of fake news, online abuse, misogynist doxing, ransomware attacks and state-sponsored cyber-terrorism. Like many others, Julian, Anne, George and Dick felt the world was becoming a colder and harsher place, for no reason that they could really understand or control. The devices that ordinary people relied upon to live their lives were being turned into weapons against them and, one morning in early autumn, Anne, Dick and George found themselves sitting at the kitchen table being subjected to yet another lecture from Julian. It's all about security, he said for the third time. I think I'm a Julian. So they go to visit Gran and they get this. And besides, I hardly seem to eat anything these days, Gran went on. You should all go out for a nice walk, though. There are lovely walks around these parts. The town was a favourite haunt of the Bronte sisters, you know. They used to come here to buy calico. As Julian understood it, there wasn't a town in this part of the world which hadn't been favoured by the Brontes in some ways, as they might have put it, and subsequently exploited for the purposes of tourism. Any truth in the matter of the Brontes' affection had long ago stopped being even part of the point. He promised Gran they would be sure to go for a good long hike. We've got some illustrations in here as well, uh, which just add to it, they're quite nice. Although, I mean, I assume that's how they worked in the original books. It's been a long time since I read The Famous Five, but I basically just take like a line I like a funny line from one of the jokes in the book and then illustrate it, you know? So we get uh, chapter four, of course we can help with the computer, and it begins. When they inquired, it turned out there were various things that Granny B needed help with on her computer. She wanted to set up an iTunes account so she could download and listen to some of the old records I used to have, as a friend had recently told her that all the old music was now available digitally. When she talked about the old records, her face became suddenly animated, as though she could remember the first time she had heard them. When asked to name the artist, however, she became vague and started humming and tapping her fingers as an aid memoir. The Everly Brothers, she said, the Beverly Sisters. Is that two separate groups, or were you correcting yourself? I love the Everly Brothers, they're great. I like this as well, uh, one of my, I guess, favourite pieces of classical music. It's one that everyone recognises, you know. When he had the music piled up in front of him, he looked through the collection and let out a sigh. It mainly comprised of northern colliery marching bands, soundtracks to West End musicals, and classical music compilations with track listings like Carmina Burana, Carl Earth, Heineken advert. Nevertheless, the music was soon uploaded onto iTunes and present in the library. So we get from this, uh, they're setting up her iPod and it says, You see, there's nothing on it at all except a few audiobooks and some photos. Don't look at those, said Gran. God, I dread to think. And then um, George is talking to her gran grandma Lydia, she's called, and uh, George is off work by pretending that her grandma is ill, and so she needs to get like evidence of this, even though it's not her grandma, but we get this. You seem terribly distressed, said George. I am, said Lydia. Would you look this way, George asked, holding up her phone. That's lovely, thank you. That'll convince them back at work. And we get this, so Anne is on the phone to somebody, and... Uh, <laughs> I think we've all been, been there where we've been talking to people on the phone and sort of ended up saying awkward stuff like this. I realise that, Rita, said Anne patiently. No, I do realise that it's irregular. Is the name on the account now? Oh, thank you. And as promised, I'll send through a scan of my grandmother's marriage certificate and mark the email for your notice. Thank you, Rita. You've been most helpful. How is the weather up there in Newcastle, by the way? Oh, is it? Oh, I'm so sorry. You have such a lovely voice, by the way. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. My friend Joe lives in Newcastle. The joke is that in Newcastle, they're, they're so hard that they uh, just wear short sleeve t-shirts like this, even in the winter. And then uh, they go out and they're looking inside the pantry to try and find some food and we get this. Dick had reached up to a high shelf and brought down out of the darkness another shallower tin. He levered off the lid, exposing a tray of white powder. They were all at a loss, but at the same time strangely impressed by the ingenuity of the wartime generation. Dick took a spoon of powder, mixed it in a cup with water, then peered down at it through the quivering candlelight. He sniffed. Could be mustard, he said. Or custard, said Anne. Powdered egg, possibly, suggested George. 
Dick took a thoughtful sip and cocked his head on one side. I think it might be hyper long life milk, you know, he said. What are you doing with Grandad's foot powder? said Gran behind them. They all screamed. Mmm, delicious. And then at the end, Grandma goes viral. And we get this, which I think here in the booktube community in particular, we are all very aware of this. While it came as no surprise to Julian that YouTubers were very much the plat de jour for the book trade, the numbers involved were startling to them all. A smooth-talking London agent had swooped down upon Gran and, seemingly with a snap of his fingers, had auctioned off a book for a six-figure sum. How much? Julian asked. Do you need a ghostwriter? Don't let the bugger near it, came Stan's voice from the background. Thanks, love, said Gran, but they've given me the lass who does Zoella. So yeah, overall, five Get Grand Online, very humorous read. I gave this a pretty strong four out of five. I've enjoyed all of these famous five books for adults, to be honest, and I'm hopefully gonna get through all of them eventually. Definitely recommend this over A Christmas Carol 2 Contagion, which just wasn't very good. But uh, yeah, check it out if your curiosity has been piqued. So there we have it, that's what I made of Five Get Grand Online by Enid Blight and slash Bruno Vincent. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you've read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.